Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Uh, we're going to be doing another more technical, uh, practical tutorial here today. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be talking about how to convert a router, and just an old router, into a wireless access point. And so uh, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you what we're going to do, show you the equipment and the things that we are trying to uh, work with. So I'm going to be cutting in and out with, uh, I'm going to use my phone to record some extra footage. And that's actually why I'm wearing the um, headset here so I can actually go around because this is my wireless mic. I can go around and do the various things with cameras and get a good consistent audio quality. All right. So uh, here's what we are doing is, um, so over here is where I have my PFSense router, which is running right here. So this is a gigabit system. It has my, uh, my one LAN card over here, which is pulling in data from the modem, which is, which is an, an Eric's uh, surfboard. Um, and uh, what we see back here is this guy here, the antenna, this is actually the wireless card. Now, there's a challenge with BSD, which PFSense is based on, where they actually do not really support wireless cards very well at all. So while this is a BGN card, it only supports the BG um, networking protocols on the router system, which means that you have one of the best routers you could possibly have with the crappiest wireless internet. And so that's kind of the problem we're going to be resolving. Now, I'm okay with it being sort of crappy internet, to be perfectly honest, because most of my equipment is hardwired in. Um, but uh, what I'm going to do is, what I found is that uh, I've been doing some other work in, uh, in my other office, kind of like way out of this office in another dark room of the house, and I've been using the iPad lately, and I found out that the Surface, the Microsoft Surface, does not connect to the wireless on this protocol. The iPhone has problems with it, and the iPad simply crashes it. And so there's a problem with the wireless uh, setup running the way this is. And so what we're going to do is we're going to resolve it. Of course, the second problem is there are so many wireless signals in this complex that I'm in that my wireless can't compete. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a wireless access point um, throughout the rest of the house. So to show you what I have going on here, uh, this first cable coming out, this goes directly into my NAS. So everything here is gigabit. The, route, the modem and the router are all gigabit ports. This goes into a gigabit port in my NAS, which is running Open Media Vault. Uh, the middle one here actually goes over to my eight port switch. And so that's all gigabit. And then the last one here is the printer. Eventually, I'm going to move the printer over onto the switch because the printer is never even really turned on much. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the printer line. I'm going to swap the printer line with where the, the current line that goes to the living room uh, uh, goes right into the router. And the reason is I like to shut off the switch when I'm done using it for the, for the night. So we're going to go ahead and do a quick walk through there. Here's the alien with his graduation cap. So what we see here is down here, the blue wire is a cat six line that I've coming around. So I'm actually going to run this across the other way. You can see where it's kind of running in now. Um, this is, I don't know, like 50 foot or whatever cat six. I'm going to reroute it down this way so it can go right into the router. And then this guy actually comes over here and it comes over to where I have the Raspberry Pi plugged in because this is an old dumb TV and that's the way I prefer my TVs. So I actually just keep my Raspberry Pi mounted right to the back of the TV system back here. And that works beautifully fine. I actually control that with either the iPad or one of the other phones using the Core app. And so the challenge that we want to do is I wanted to get a wireless access point connect it over here somewhere so that uh, I can get better Wi-Fi internet. But the, one of the things that I need to have on that is I need to have uh, an Ethernet pass-through so that the Raspberry Pi can be plugged back in. Okay, so with the Raspberry Pi, we have a 10-100 uh, Ethernet port on it. So that's what's on the Raspberry Pi 2. I'm not sure what's on the 3. Um, but I'm actually okay with the twos because I don't necessarily want onboard wireless. That's one of the things I don't like about it. And most ideally, I wanted to get a, a wireless access point that had AC uh, internet. Now, this guy here, this was my old router. This is a E1000, which was fine when I only had a couple little computers and things and an older platform. The problem is, is that the, the network ports on these, these are also 10100, so I'm going to lose... 
uh, some of my speed coming in and, and going out of this, but I'm only other connection point that I'm going to have to that is uh, the Raspberry Pi, and that's already at 10100. So it's not going to impact it. Well, this will not get me the AC wireless speed that my computer is capable of near gigabit speed on the wireless card. Um, the reality is the cheapest I can get one of those wireless access points that runs the speed that, I, that I'm capable of in the office is actually... Um, uh, that actually would cost something to the effect of 120 to 150 dollars. These guys here, you can pick these up at your local thrift stores for like 10 bucks, and it's worth having slightly less internet to be able to do that. So what we're going to do is talk about how I'm going to get all of this set up. So what I need to do is I'm going to have to plug this guy into the system and then go into the um, into the network settings and uh, and make some adjustments. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug this into port one is just fine, and I'm going to plug this into the back of the computer, and then we're going to go ahead and plug it in, and I'm going to log into the online uh, platform. Um, now with the Cisco routers, not all routers can do this, but particularly with your Cisco routers, is you can set these guys up. Um, as pass-throughs, you can set them up as a separate network, you can set them up as the primary router, you can set up as a slave router. So you have a lot of options with these Cisco routers here. All right, so now I've plugged it in. So now I got the connection established, um, and so what we're going to do now is I'm going to uh, boot up the, um, uh, I'm going to boot up the website to manage this guy. Okay, so here we are inside of the web admin panel, and I do apologize the audio is going to be off sync here because the uh, original recording setup was not set up on this screen to record the um, uh, to record the wireless mic. So here what we're looking at is you need to turn off the DHCP server on your router. This is the system that allows your router to control the IP addresses and what we need is we need our primary router in this case the PFSense router uh, to control that so we're going to disable that server next is we need to change the IP address so that it is within the same IP system so my IP system is 192.168.5 and the PFSense router is dot one so I'm going to change this router to dot uh, dot five dot two and the reason is um, I set mine at a weird number, which is five, because I use a VPN on my network, and if I'm connected to the VPN, uh, then what it will end up doing is the VPN will uh, will get confused if my system is on the same uh, the same uh, IP block as the router I'm at. So, for example, if I'm at a friend's house, 192.168.1.1. And I connect to my router, 192.168.1.1, it's going to cause me some problems. So by changing that to 5, I don't have any problems with the VPN. So that's essentially all we need to do. Um, what I'm going to need to do is once these guys are saved, there will be a save at the bottom of the page. And then with the save at the very bottom of the page, we need to reset it. Now, at this point, you're going to have to plug your router into the, um, you'll have to plug the router there into the, uh, into the, the primary router so that your primary router can can give it the IP address for the network. Uh, if you attempt to plug directly into here, it's not going to work for you. Okay, so now for the PFSense router, which is my main router, uh, this guy here is set up. This is the line that I have moved over here. It's coming into the port. Now, when you're running these uh, routers, what you'll see is you have the yellow port on the Cisco routers that says Internet. And my phone's not focusing on it, but it should say Internet there. The four blue ones are the other the other pass through basically your your LAN or your switch uh, networks. Notice that I am not plugged into the yellow to have this set up in this manner. Okay, and the reason I am not set up for that is because um, the internet is expecting uh, it's expecting something from like a router directly. So this will allow this router to be set up as a switch. So the gray one here is going back out to the router. This is once going into this computer. So now I can see that I have a good hardline test. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to verify that the phone is still on uh, this router setup, and it is. 
So it is set up. So there are two wireless networks in my office right now. One is attached to the PFSense. One is attached right here. And so what I want to do is I want to test my resources, make sure my local network's working. I'm going to actually do that by pulling up uh, VLC uh, on my phone. And you'll see the second item down there is my uh, DLNA on my Open Media Vault. And that's actually going to allow me to come into here to grab something and plays a file right off my server. So that's actually playing that file directly off of my router by running this particular system. Ah, all right, now it's got to shut that off. <laughs> Pause. Thank you. All right, so now that we have successfully set up a Cisco router as a wireless access point. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mount that in the other room. And then we're going to rerun the wires so that the wireless access point is always on even when this network switch below this desk is turned off for the night. That way I always have good wireless. My wireless will now be central to the whole house rather than um, just being back in this one corner of the house. And this router should be able to handle the Surface that was, that was giving me problems. It should be able to handle the iPad that's given, been giving me problems. And hopefully, I'll be able to run things without having the issues. So at this point in time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off the PFSense router. I'm going to pull the wireless card out of there so I only have one wireless uh, system in, in the whole house right now. And actually, it should be better. And I'm going to go ahead and run that as a quick test. Uh, with this laptop here, which will take me, just pardon me for a few minutes as I um, get this laptop turned on, because if this laptop connects to the PFSense router, then the uh, the network speed is limited to the speeds involved in a BG router. On this router, it actually will have N speeds, because that is an N router. So that's kind of what we have going on here. Um, any questions, let me know. Of course, the other options, you don't have to set up your wireless access point to behave this way. You can set it up as a guest network. In fact, if I want, really wanted a guest network, if I had enough people over here at all the time that I wanted to have a guest network, um, I would actually just go out to Goodwill and buy another one of those for 10 bucks and set up another one. And what you do is you just set that up on a completely different um, subnet. And then you can set it up, and then those people can get on the internet, but they can't access the resources I have on my shared servers. So that's how to set up a wireless access point using an old Cisco router. Leave me thoughts, comments, questions, uh, and whatever else below. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.